Hey everybody, welcome to Alberta Camping Tips. Today we're going to talk solar panels. So while you're dry camping, you'll find that it's a little tough to keep powered up unless you have solar or a generator. So what we use here are a couple of these solar panels that we picked up from Costco. Two kits set by Coleman. They come with a panel, a PWM controller, and an inverter, a 300 watt inverter. So we picked up two of these kits and we quickly found that, well, you kind of need to adjust your system once you add more panels. So I'm going to go over that and let you guys see what you can do so you can stay powered up while you're dry camping. So when you buy these kits from Costco, you end up getting a PWM controller. It looks like this. This is a pulse wave modulation controller. This is a 7 amp controller and the panels themselves put out a maximum of about 5.5 amps. So this is adequate if you're just doing one panel. Not so adequate when you're adding a second. So what we did is we purchased another controller which is a little better and handles two panels and actually functions and works a lot better than a PWM controller. The controller you want to go for is this here. Uh, this is available on Amazon. It's an uh, MPPT controller, which is different technology from the uh, PWM. And if you can see the interface on this, it does have a display. It tells me how many amps I'm bringing in from the sun, how many volts are coming in from the panels, how much the battery voltage is, and how much wattage is actually, or amps, is going to the battery. A couple of advantages with this unit is this PWM controller basically it maxes out at 7 amps. You'll never get that out of one, one of your uh, panels. So if your panel is putting out 2.5 amps during a, you know overcast or even a bright sunny day depending on how much sun and how efficient it's being. This is getting about 20 to 22 volts from the panel. But it would only send if your battery is sitting at 13.7 it's only sending 13.7 volts back into your battery. And it's only sending in the 2.8 amps, 2.5 amps, and probably less. The MPPT controller, however, works a little differently. What it does is it will take any excess voltage you have coming in from your panels and convert that into amps. Our two panels are rated for 5.5 amps each. That's max efficiency, and normally you wouldn't get that anywhere but at the equator. Up here in Alberta, you're not going to get that max efficiency. But the MPPT controller has a feature that helps, and that is it converts your voltage over to amps. So if our, on a good day, if our panels are putting out 7 amps, 8 amps, and usually on a good sunny day it's about 7, what this controller will do, however, is take the excess voltage, convert that to amps, and send that into the battery. So I have been able to see with our panels, even though they're rated at about 5.5 amps max, I have actually seen 11 amps being sent directly back in to our batteries. So on an average day, I'm seeing 7, seven amps from the panels. I'm seeing about 8.5 amps on average going into the batteries. So keep in mind when you are charging your batteries with solar, your amperage is coming in is rated basically on amp hours. So if you're getting 8 amps coming in, you need an hour to put that into your battery. And of course, you're not going to be getting that maximum amount. So what we do during the day is we basically minimize our ele electric use inside the trailer. We charge our devices during the day when the sun's shining. And we make sure that at nighttime, we don't use the lights and everything else on the trailer unless we're inside and we want to grab something. But otherwise, the lights are off. Even the outside lights, we don't use them very often. We also use uh, solar lights outside. We basically are starting to purchase these. We don't have a whole bunch yet, but we're purchasing solar lights that you can find at Home Depot and various hardware stores that basically will allow you to charge these with the sun. And they'll give off pretty decent light overnight, and you can use these around a dry campsite rather than using your trailer. Another tip on your trailer, things to keep in mind, is that your trailer 
does use power even though you think you have everything turned off. One thing that people don't really realize is the amount of power that your fridge uses. Your fridge actually uses half an amp an hour on average. To span that out over 24 hours, that's 12 amps a day coming out of your batteries, which means you have to replenish that every day. Or if you're only out for a few days, you realize, you know, if you're out for three days, you're using 36 amps worth of power. We, we use two six volt batteries in our trailer. That gives us about 200 amps, amp hours. You can only go to 50% max. Any lower than that, you're going to damage your battery. So you really, we have 100, 100 amps of power to use. And so you're going to use that up in about four or five days on average, just from your fridge and any ambient lighting that you're using occasionally, and your water pump and everything else. Your water pump is using a lot of power when it runs, although it runs sporadically it does use a lot of juice and of course your furnace this is the one thing in Alberta it does get cool at night and sometimes you want to use your furnace we find with dry camping it's next to impossible um, you're gonna use that for one day and you're gonna suck out a lot of power if we use our furnace overnight it's on for hours on end overnight um, these things of course trailers are not very well insulated and they will take in a lot of cold overnight so you want to make sure you don't want to use your furnace much. Turn it off overnight, keep it low. Uh, your furnace is using anywhere from 8 to 12 amps. So if it runs for an hour, there goes 8 to 12 amps out of your battery. So it does add up, it does take away. Basically, dry camping, you're doing a numbers game with your batteries. You have to either replenish the numbers going into your battery during the day, or you're going to be running out of juice pretty quick. I haven't mounted mine yet. I'm going to be doing that shortly in the next few weeks. I'm going to mount this inside, kind of make it a little bit more of a permanent mount. I'm also adding in the battery temperature mod module for it. So basically it monitors the temperature of the batteries. And also I'm going to have a uh, little module that goes inside the trailer, which allows me to see the display that's on this inside the trailer without having to look on this. I'm going to hook it up so that I can basically unhook it when I don't need it. When I park the trailer and don't want to put the solar panels outside while it's parked, I can just unhook this. It will be a battery drain because it is directly hooked up to the battery. It doesn't go through the trailer system at all. It basically, our trailer does have a built-in solar panel plug on the side. This is where this is plugged into currently. But it actually goes directly into the battery. So if this is hooked up, you don't have a panel on it, it's gonna be taking some power. So your battery will drain by itself just by showing the display on this. So yeah, it's a good idea. If you're gonna permanently mount these, either make sure you've got permanent panels mounted or have a shutoff switch for this. The reason we went portable, that's another thing. Um, a lot of people like to put their panels on the roof. That's a good idea. If you're going to do that, I would recommend you go with at least 250 plus watts of panels. When you're in a shaded site, you're going to have trouble grabbing solar. And you're only going to get a couple amps. Uh, two to three amps is what I find on average when my these two panels I have are in shade or overcast skies. That's going to cut back on how much. You're going to recover your fridge every day, basically, is what it's going to come down to. Anything you use above that will be access, and you're going to have trouble. We've gone with the portables. If we had a different unit, we probably would go with mounted units. The portables are great, though. And we have a friend that actually has mounted panels on top of his trailer, but he also bought a portable because the portables are good that you can actually move them around your site. If you're in a shaded site, but you can go through some trees and find some sun, these portables are great for that. So it's a good idea. If, even if you have the mounted ones, you may want to look at having a portable available just for those sites that you can't get full sun all day from the for the top of your trailer. Another good little cool gadget we have that basically helps us out while we're dry camping is one of these. This is a BioLite cell phone charger and it is basically a solar panel with a battery built into it right here. You can pick these up at a Mountain Equipment Co-op and online at Amazon and of course straight off the website for BioLite. Um, these are pretty pretty neat actually because you just basically lay them out on a picnic table or in the sun somewhere. They got a little bit of a stand on the back so you can aim it. It's got a little aiming sight right here. You want to get the black dot to line up in the middle and it gives max sun. It's a uh, 3000 milliamps. 
and the panel is 11 watts or about 10 watts max and that's of course at the equator but yeah it's a good little unit and uh, it'll good enough to charge a cell phone and that's you know third world countries are getting these basically for that there I used to be I think you bought one of these and one got sent to the third world country it allows them to, to be off-grid and charge their devices easily so items like this are really great when you're dry camping. And it definitely does make things a little easier when you've got multiple devices you want to charge. Or just one cell phone, I guess, with this one. Because you know, 3,000 milliamps will do about one cell phone. So to give you an idea of what we're getting right now, this is a fairly overcast sky. There's uh, rain clouds moving in. But right now, our, uh, our solar panels are pumping out. 14 volts, which is low. It's doing half an amp. Um, so far, we've actually accumulated in the last week. We started off, this meter was throwing, we had accumulated 9 kilowatt hours. That was from last year. Uh, when we started using it this season, we did go higher than that last year, but I think it kind of averages it out over the year. But since we've been using this for the last probably two weeks, we've actually gone up to 17 kilowatt hours is what we generate. And I think we're generating roughly in a really sunny day, we can do a kilowatt hour with just these 280 watt panels. So even though it's a little overcast and we're getting half an amp coming in, we've got 13.1 volts going, or the battery is showing that, and it's got a half an amp going in. So right now, even overcast, we're recovering the fridge is basically what's happening. So the fridge is being charged directly off the panels. Makes it a lot easier, you know, so you definitely, want to make sure that if you're going to go with solar panels even if you're only going to buy a single one of these panels i highly recommend you get one of these mppt controllers it will give you more juice and give you a little more idea of what you're putting in or what's coming into your batteries we do use a generator as well we only just tend to use it when we need it so today for example we had a couple of storms rolling through of course then you're in your trailer so what we did is fire up the generator and you can sit inside and the generator is still charging the batteries so another thing another tip when it comes to generators i know a lot of people use generators when they're out dry camping uh, we've had sites and we've had times where yeah we've seen people running ten, you know their generator all day long for 10 plus hours until it runs out of gas basically there's a reason for that the charger in the trailer itself or in your RV only does about 5 amps. So your battery is gaining about 5 to 10 amps depending on your charger. If you've got a better, if you got a better uh, converter in your unit, it's going to do a 10 amp boost. And then eventually cut back to 5 amps and trickle after that. But for the most part, the ones that came with your trailer are doing 5 amps. So to give you an idea, if you're using a generator, yeah, you're doing 5 amps an hour. And basically, if you've used your fridge overnight, or the last 24 hours, you've got 12 amps to recover. So you're two plus hours just to recover your fridge. That's not recovering anything else that might need to be regenerated. So your water pump, furnace if you used it, those types of things. You're definitely going to be wanting to use something else to supplement even a generator. Um, generator by itself you're gonna know your neighbors if that's all you have so definitely invest in some solar not hard to put to hook up and it's very efficient it's gonna help you a lot and save you time and money on gas and help the environment of course because solar is just the Sun beating down we use two six volt batteries in our trailer which is you know a little more efficient and deep cycle than uh, using 212 volts for example or 112 volt and if you're using 112 volt you got to realize you've got about maybe 160 amps amp hours and you can't deep cycle those nearly as bad as good so the 12 volts are a lot more efficient that way or six volts i should say are a lot more efficient so definitely consider your batteries you're using we started off this season uh we had two six volt batteries that i screwed up and left in the trailer last winter thinking it was warm and I just forgot about them and never went back and took them out and we started camping dry this year and within about a few days I realized they are just not holding the charge they were last year because last year we had no problem being solar for basically three four weeks this year we noticed that our batteries weren't keeping up at all 
and after doing the math and figuring out the voltage once the solar was unhooked I was realizing that the batteries were at about 70-75% efficiency so I did replace them right away. If you can only go down to 50% it doesn't leave you much power if you're 75% efficiency so we definitely wanted to change those and got them fixed and learned a lesson that next year we'll make sure that we uh, unhook those batteries in the fall or when we're done camping which for us is usually October and yeah take them home keep them somewhere nice and warm and make sure that you're giving them a trickle charge every couple of weeks or every month and that'll keep them at 100% efficiency and make them last many years. So with our current setup basically we're able to uh, run our systems inside uh, we can even use our TV we basically these panels that come from Costco come with a 300 watt inverter and we plug that in inside into the uh, 12 volt power and hook up our TV to it and we can watch TV out here in the boonies and not have any generator running or anything and you you know we don't sit and watch TV for long but for you know the news or an hour or more no problem at all and that seems to work just fine especially if you're watching during the day when you actually are running solar the other thing to keep in mind we do power or try to charge our electronics during the day and while we're doing that it's those electronics are pulling power that won't be going into the battery so we do find that yeah it does tend to make it a little tougher to stay powered up and finally if you're looking for a generator definitely look for something like this which is an inverter generator it gives you basically a little bit of a quieter unit. This one has a, uh, an economy switch on it which cuts down the revs and only draws the power and revs up when it needs the power. A lot of people seem to buy these industrial strength generators. When you're camping, you don't want that. It's going to be too noisy for your neighbors. There's a lot of cases with this thing, we can block it out with trees, we can hide it behind the trailer. Lots of places we can aim the muffler so that basically it doesn't affect our neighbors. It does about 50 decibels when it's running, which is pretty quiet. Uh, quite often the next site over doesn't even really hear it. And during a rainstorm, yeah, if people are inside their trailers, they're not going to hear it anyway. We bought this 1700-watt uh, one. We're in Alberta. You don't need air conditioning that much. There's not really much need to go out and buy a 3000-watt generator. Unless you're planning on going somewhere warm, you know it's going to be dry camping, I wouldn't bother. We've never had an issue. We've actually been able to run the air conditioning with this, but it does actually max it out, and you got to be careful how you start it. But we can actually run the air conditioning, but then the, the generator's running at full force, and it's really loud. So it's not recommended. So it's definitely something you want to look at. If you want to buy a generator, go for something like this. Anyway, I hope this video has helped you with your power needs, with your dry camping. Feel free to leave any uh, comments below if you have any questions. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more all summer. Happy camping!